Hey everyone, welcome back to Fabric Espresso, new episode about data engineering and data science. And today we have a guest. Ted is joining us for like it's another time, fourth or fifth time when you are joining to discuss the latest innovations that happened for Lake House. Hey Ted. Hi everyone. So what has changed recently? So it was long anticipated feature uh, and finally we released it. So we announced the release of schemas in the lake house, which basically allows people to organize the tables within the lake house in the folders. So I'll show later you a little bit how it works, but yeah, there's a little bit more things to that. In addition to this, we also introduced possibility to query data using multi-part naming. And we introduce possibility not only to specify schema in your queries, but also workspace. That gives some cool features such as cross workspace queries using Spark SQL. Sounds exciting. And now I'd like to read one question. There is a Fabric community portal. And a few months ago, one user asked a question I'm reading. What are the various ways of creating of new schema in Lakehouse? By default, DBO is available. So is the feature that you mentioned related to schemas solving the question and the problem that the user came up with? Yes, absolutely. Actually, that's that's an point question. So uh, when you provision a new lake house, today we are having a public preview, so it's opt-in. So you'll still need to select a checkbox when creating a new lake house, which will enable schemas. And as you can see, when a new lake house is created, you have a DBO schema created by default. DBO schema cannot be renamed, cannot be deleted. It stays there. Now, if you click on tables and select new schema, that's where you can add any additional custom schemas. That allows you to organize your data into any kind of areas, like it could be business areas or something else, for example, creating a marketing schema, sales schema, etc. Now, in addition to that, what you can do now, you can move tables across schemas using drag and drop. So that's one way of creating schemas. Another way, of course, is using Spark code. You can easily go and execute your PySpark and create additional schemas. As you know, uh, everything in Fabric is quite open. In this case, it's two. We haven't closed any data around schemas. So schemas basically are folders in your one lake repository, which Lakehouse runs on top of it. So if you will go with your uh, one lake explorer and look at the Lakehouse, you will see that within the tables folder, there are other folders which are basically representation of schemas. So if you want to create schema using One Lake Explorer, you could just create a folder in your tables folder and that will be recognized as schema. But better option, of course, is to use something which is as a managed service. It's either Lakehouse Explorer or Spark. Yeah, once we are around it. So let's assume I use Spark and I play with the lake house, I create a new schema. Can DW read it? Is it synchronized? Yes. So um, SQL endpoint, first of all, uh, recognize all of the schemas. So so basically, uh, all of the data which you have in the lake house will be represented in the same way in SQL endpoint. And Data Warehouse supported schemas before, Lakehouse didn't. So everything what was in Lakehouse was represented in DBO schema. Now, same thing will still happen. Everything what's in DBO schema will be in SQL endpoint in DBO, but you will also have other schemas with tables represented in SQL endpoint as they are in a, a Lakehouse. So yeah, all of the data which is seen in Lakehouse will be also shown in SQL endpoint. And from the scenarios perspective, what are the main customer scenarios as a customer when I should consider using it? What is the flow? What's the path? One of big scenarios which was highly anticipated and customers were asking for it is how could I bring multiple Delta tables? Imagine you have like a data lake where you have like thousands of Delta tables and 
you want to reference them. You don't want to bring that data through your pipelines, copying them or data flows, but you want just to reference it. Previously, the approach was that you would have to create individual shortcuts for each of the table. And when the number grows to a high like thousands and so on, it, it becomes two tedious tasks. Another thing is, you know, if there are any changes which is happening in your data lake, like additional tables getting added, you would need to go and create new additional shortcuts. Now you can create a schema shortcut, which points to a folder which contains all your delta tables, and automatically all of your tables will be represented in the lake house. So you don't need to pick each an individual delta table. You just need to point to the parent one and all of that tables will be represented in your lake house. So that's one of the scenarios, which is more of related to bringing data. Majority of the scenarios where customers use HEMAS is for data organization, as I mentioned, either breaking it by geographies or breaking it by business areas. What additional things HEMAS will enable with one leak security is to set permissions not only to tables, but also to particular schema access. So you can set, for example, a certain people read access only to certain schemas like sales, but not give them access to human resource data and vice versa. So more granularity, better uh, access control. I think these are the key things with schemas. Do you see that that will impact the design or how we are coming up with medallion architecture in the fabric? I do not think that will be impacting medallion architecture directly, uh, mostly because you wouldn't be willing to put two layers of your medallion architecture into the same lake house. First of all, due to access control, second, really due to the data movement itself. I would imagine that you would still go for the option where you create multiple lake houses which serve different purposes. The thing with lake house is that when you provision a lake house, you get a full feature set which is used uh, for you. So you get your SQL endpoint, you have semantic model, and all of these models will be consuming all of the data in a lake house. And if you have, for example, bronze layer, Maybe you don't want your semantic model to consume all of your data. So as a result of that, I think mixing layers and schemas, it's possible, but depends on the business case. In terms of the feature limitation, do you see any other than its preview? So we are encouraging to evaluate it, test it, but still a few months, few weeks that it will hit the GA stage. GA means it's designated to work and serve you for production. How do you see it? So there is a list of limitations at the moment, both related to the workspace naming, uh, related to what Spark runtimes works with schemas, etc. You can read more about it in our documentation online. The team of engineers is working to remove these limitations even before we reach general availability. But for today, there are some limitations which hopefully will not block most of the scenarios. As a user, is there anything else I should know about schemas before jumping to the usage of this? So there are some exciting hidden benefits with us introducing multi-part naming. So one of those, which I briefly mentioned, is ability to specify your workspace in the namespace. So today, when you reference certain object, previously you were using a combination of the lake house and table. Now you are not only using lake house schema and table combination, but we also added workspace into reference combination. What that allows, it allows you to reference tables which are located across multiple workspaces, but where the user still has access. So you are able to cross join data across workspaces. For example, you might have a workspace with some company's uh, sales data in one workspace, and you might have your human resource data in a different workspace. Uh, that segregation makes total sense. If you want to run a query and check, for example, which of your employees are actually also customers of your company. So you would be able to run a single query, which is able to reference the data 
from human resource workspace, join it with your sales data and get you a result. So that's just one of the examples where cross workspace queries are really beneficial. But yeah, I think multi-part naming is a big thing too. The feature is in a preview stage. What's next with that functionality? Yeah, so we definitely will work on uh, stabilizing the functionality and enhancing the uh, support of different runtimes, for example. So we have now uh, 3.5, which is experimental runtime. And at the moment for public preview, it's not supported, but we will definitely include that in support. Uh, support of different characters. Currently, there's some limitation in, in workspace name. We also plan to remove all of that and actually enable support of almost any of the characters in the naming and yeah i think that's mainly focus on this particular feature and and once it's stabilized our goal in lakehouse is to continue enhance the capabilities around data discovery so schemas is one of the options where you're able to kind of discover your data uh, better by in including additional organization of the tables. But we also look like enhancing the data with metadata, so adding possibility to add custom metadata and other things. So definitely follow that space and, and you'll see much more interesting things coming soon. Awesome. Thanks, Ted, for joining. And for those who are watching us, please remember to leave the like button. Leave a comment with a question or maybe with the idea for the future improvements or future features for the lake house. We're happy to take them to our uh, roadmap. At the same time, uh, remember to also visit the page ideas.fabric.microsoft.com just to submit your feature idea. Thanks for watching and until the next time, happy using the schemas and multi-part naming in the lake house. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye.